Hi and welcome to part 4 of our Photoshop tutorial with the title Working with Masks. Masks in Photoshop are one of, in my opinion, are one of the most important features um, for retouching images, for bringing elements together and most importantly to make sure that all the changes that you do to your pictures are uh, changeable or reversible or any time adjustable. So let me uh, get started right away. If you have any picture in Photoshop, uh, you may have noticed in some when you open some images that uh, right next to the uh, to the little layer icon here that there is a little more space. And let me quickly uh, do it. Uh, I'm gonna unlock my layer and I'm gonna do something. Uh, weirdly, I'm gonna change, uh, I'm gonna select a part of my image, let's say I'm gonna select uh, this car here with enough space around it and then I'm going to copy and paste it. So now I have a copy of my car and to see it a little bit better I'm going to turn off everything else. So now when I zoom in, I'm gonna zoom in to 100%, I'm gonna only see the layer of my car. So um, this layer is all has no pixels anywhere here, but it only is very, has a very small content, a, a rectangular uh, a set of pixels with the car on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use uh, if I now want to uh, remove all the street here on this picture, and I just want to keep the car. I could use the eraser tool and erase all the pixels on the layer that I don't want, the, the street, but in this case I could never undo that. And that's why we have a concept called masks. And a mask is uh, an addition to a layer that makes parts visible and parts invisible. And I'm going to show you right away and you will hopefully you'll uh, understand it, how it works. So from my layer here, on, of the car and the street, I'm gonna give it a layer mask. So you simply select the layer that we're talking about, layer one, and down here is a, a, a symbol that looks like the flag of Japan. Black and white, it's called add layer mask. And it will add a layer mask to your layer. So first of all, that's not the layer, it is a kind of an extra layer connected to the mask. You can see that you can either work on the layer when you select the layer or on the mask. The big difference is when you work on your layer, you have your foreground and background color as you would like it. Let me quickly go to something more uh, visible, so a blue and a green foreground and background color. When I'm on the mask, I only can work in black and white or of course anything between. So let's try it right away. I'm clicking on the mask and now whatever is white on the mask is visible and what is black on the mask is invisible. Right now everything is white. You can see it here in this little preview everything is white. So, but what happens if we now, we are on the mask, we use a brush and we switch black to white. That is a shortcut that we will now use a lot to switch foreground and background color. That is X on your keyboard. When you hit X, it switches between foreground, uh, it switches the foreground and the background color. And as we do this often, switch between foreground and background because black means invisible and white means visible, uh, we do, we wanna make ourselves familiar with the shortcut. So right now I am in black and I'm painting with a large brush and you can see when I'm on the mask and I paint something, I, it looks like I'm gonna painting it away. I'm gonna looks like as if I'm erasing it, but actually I'm painting in black. So when I accidentally paint over my car, which I wanted to keep, I can anytime switch foreground and background color with the keyboard shortcut X, and I can paint it back because wherever I paint in white will make the layer will make the layer trans uh, will make the layer visible again. Okay, so that was just a brief introduction. I think it's not quite a good example to use uh, to use it on the street. There, let me get our get, let me get the um, the old picture back and uh, delete the layer and the layer mask. Let's do it again. Uh, this time, I'm going to do the same thing one more time. I'm going to select 
the car roughly with a big rectangle. I'm using Control C for copy and Control V for paste. But now I'm going to move uh, the car uh, uh, just behind this one. I'm going to create something like a convoy. So uh, here is the car. And of course, when I move it uh, for, to the front in perspective, if it will get larger. So uh, I, need to, I need to make it larger. So one, one size reference would be the lane width. So I'm going to adjust it so that here the, the white lines are in, in, in the perspective of those lines. And I'm, I'll just make it larger. Control T for transform. I'm going to scale it up so that the lane size fits my perspective. That looks good. That looks good. And I hit enter. Uh, the only pro uh, yeah, uh, the only problem is that I wanted I wanted the car to like overlap with the other one. It doesn't overlap because it's in perspective. Uh, it looks it does overlap a little bit here on the shadow. So now uh, for this car, we're going to remove those parts of the street that are uh, that are like interfering with our layer underneath. So here it is. I'm going to give it a layer mask, and on the layer mask. I paint in black with a brush and I'm going to remove all the things that I don't want. So let's say this part here, maybe the part there. It doesn't have to be very precise. So like this. And now I turn it on. So now you will still, it looks quite good in perspective, but what you might notice is that the edges of my of this layer here are still visible so i can still see when i turn the other one on that there is a little that there is a gap between uh, there is a edge between those two that's why i am using not only a hard brush that i'm painting on so not only a hard edge but if i do a right click here i can also use a, a a brush with a soft edge and like this and I'm going to make the edge of my mask transparent or partly transparent or soft. Don't get too close when you accidentally paint too much away. We already know with X we can switch between foreground and background color and we can paint that back. So we make sure that all the edges here of my layer are soft because then when we put it on top here, it, uh, it will just fit perfect. Let's try it one more time. This time, um, we're going to put one more convoy car in the front. We still have it here, so I only need to do uh, Control V again to paste it one more time. This time, we want the car in the front. That's why we have to make it smaller, so Control T uh, for scaling it down. Again, I'm using the uh, the lines for a for scale reference. Here it is. Let's get it a little closer together, because in that case, we will have problems with overlap. So here it is, and I hit enter. So here is my new car on a new layer. Also, I'm going to paint the way whatever makes, uh, what makes it visible. So uh, I'm going to give the layer a layer mask. And on the layer mask, I'm painting in black. And I'm already using, I did a right click to get the soft edge brush. But you can also use uh, up here, uh, choose a different uh, round brush with soft edges. And I'm going to remove all the things that uh, could spot, I uh, could uh, show that it's just a, f uh, a montage. Okay, so here it is, a simple uh, way to, to remove parts. So right now we are having those two layers of the two cars in different sizes, and underneath it we have the 
other layer. So here it is, our SUV convoy um, uh, riding towards Chicago. Okay, so the let's uh, quickly repeat it. Uh, the mask concept, we can add a layer mask to a, to a layer. We can use uh, brushes in black or white. White makes the layer visible, black makes it invisible. Everything between makes it partly uh, invisible. And um, we can also, um, yes, we can also take the layer effect and let me quickly turn the background off. The layer effect can also be turned off with shift click on the mask. So then you see it's a cross in the mask. So the mask is not applied anymore. When I use shift click on the mask and it temporarily uh, disables the mask. When I click one more time without shift on it, it will turn the mask back on. Uh, another thing is um, the mask can also be seen. How does it look like? So it looks like this small picture here. That is alt click on the mask. When I use alt click on the mask, I can see how the mask object actually looks. So that was the mask where we started with the round hard edged brush and then we went used the soft edge only for the center. And here's something I accidentally clicked. And the other mask here, alt click on this mask shows you how the, uh, the second mask looks like. Okay, so alt click on the mask, quite important. When you go back, uh, you can click on one of those layers. Uh, also, you can do a right click, and here's the same thing. You can disable the layer mask, shift uh, click, and you can also delete it. You can also apply it, but never. I would never do that. Applying the layer mask means actually that those pixels really get deleted. So it kind of, uh, that is the same thing as we would have used the delete uh, in the first place. So. Uh, the mask try to avoid that. So right click, what is important maybe, uh, the, whatever is set in the mask can be added to a selection. So you take the mask and add it to a selection. Why is it called add to a selection? Because if already is something, oops, if there's already something selected, so let me select something. Here's a selected rectangle. And now if I add something to the, to the selection, the mask will be added to it. Uh, in this case, um, yes, it, it's not a good example because now everything else is selected. So you can add, subtract, and so on. But if nothing is selected, oops, sorry, nothing is selected, it just means turn the mask into a selection right here. Okay, so um, this mask and selection combination can be really helpful and I'm going to show you a quick uh, a quick thing how we um, how we use uh, so how we take selections and turn it into masks and therefore I'm going to ask, uh, open a second image something I did I think on the same day uh, I was just a uh, some, the, the, I'm not Paid, I'm not getting paid for showing this uh, commercial, but it has one thing on it. It has a very sharp foreground object and has a blurry background object. And that is something that works really well. Think back to lessons where we talked about uh, different ways to select something. Here is the object selection tool. And the object selection tool allows you to select foreground objects or person. If the background is blurry, it works really well. Uh, so here it is, object selection tool, and you just have to draw a rectangle around the object so it's easier to identify. And when you let it go, it will whoop, select the object. The only little error, there is also a red something in the background that kind of interferes with the red, but it found the outline quite well. So let me use the of uh, the lasso tool just to subtract this little piece. So I hold down my Alt key and I draw a simple selection just to subtract this little piece. So now I have a selection of the areas that I want to keep. And now uh, if I take my background layer, where right now it's a background layer and it's locked, let me unlock this quickly. So now with the selection active, if I now give my layer a layer mask, 
it will automatically make the background disappear. So it will automatically paint whatever is selected white and the background is black. Okay, one more time. I'm going to show it right here. So if you select something and I don't know what to select, let's just uh, let's just select this piece here. So my skyline is selected. Now I'm going on to the layer where, where the skyline is selected and I give it a layer mask. It will automatically make everything else invisible. So when you're starting off with the, uh, with, the, with the car, for example, it is enough to do a rough selection, a quick and dirty mask around it, and then you turn it into a layer mask and it will automatically make everything else invisible. Now we can go into the details and start, uh, start painting away more of the sky and so on. So to start a mask, it's always nice to start with a rough selection and then uh, you turn the mask, alt click on the mask, the mask just looks like this. You just start to refine it with a single, single brush and you can either work in black or you can also work in white by turning it uh, a switch fork on the background color. And you can also use uh, part, uh, like partly transparent things by paint, oh sorry, that was the wrong one, by, by painting uh, partly white and that would be a gray in this case uh, that's partly selected okay so let's leave that back i'm gonna remove the the um i'm gonna roof, remove the layer mask right click delete layer mask do not apply it and uh one more thing here is my uh, the 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 layer mask that i used with the object selection tool and of course you can take the whole layer and bring it anytime onto the new object and place it anywhere on yeah i thought it's uh, it fits there but it will remove the yeah something like this Okay, so uh, I, I think it was quite clear how we added layer masks to something, how we paint on the layer mask with black or white, how we switch foreground and background color with the shortcut X. We turned the mask on and off with shift click and um, we saw the mask with alt click on the mask. This is how the mask looks like with alt click on it and to, to remove the layer mask with shift click on it and then the layer mask is removed. Um, we turned the mask into a selection, right click, add mask to selection. Now you have the same selection again and uh, we turned a selection into a mask by selecting it roughly and then add a mask automatically masks away everything outside of the selection. By the way, when we talked about selecting something, I showed you how to save a selection. My preferred method is if I want to keep, if I spend a lot of time selecting something, like I followed all the buildings on the skyline and so on, and I want to make sure that later on I can always go back to this, um, to this um, uh, selection, I usually store it kind of in a, in a layer mask. So I just apply a layer mask and even if I just turn it off again, I can always keep it and if I need the selection again, I only have to do right click and add mask to selection. There it is, the selection again. Okay, I hope that was helpful. Um, in, the next, uh, in the next one, we're going to take a look at some adjustment layers and that are kind of sums up a lot of, of the basic tools that we, we, that we want to use. But so far, I hope you enjoyed it. Play around with your own images and thanks for joining me and I'll see you in the next one.